people hello everyone and welcome to yet another video on my youtube channel mr b does electronics so i hope the intro was intriguing enough to catch all of your attention and if that's the case sit back relax and enjoy this first video showcasing this raspberry powered handheld retro gaming system which i'll be showcasing in this video as well as in some subsequent video so let's dive right in so this is the device in question and as you can see it is completely DIY I will give you a 360 degree view. So I will explain what this does, what everything does actually in a three part video. So today's video as I have already told will be an overview, second part will be a hardware and lastly there will be a software and ultimately I guess I will make a overview video once again showing different gameplay and everything so let's not waste any more time and just boot this device up so this is the power on of toggle switch so I just turn it on and let's just zoom in on the screen so this indication as you can see it just says that the in the voltage of the current that is being supplied by the battery is not enough and this is a custom startup screen that I have integrated into the system. So what I was saying is that this voltage, this indication, it doesn't affect the gameplay, at least the ones that I emulate within emulation station as you can see it is starting up. So the focus of this build was to make it as cheap as possible and it becomes very evident in the choice of the parts that I've taken and the amount of hot glue that have been used in the project. So I have shifted over to the overhead cam so that I can show you the device much more easily. So this is how the front looks and this is how the back looks and this is a quick top view. These are tactile buttons with button caps there these are the four a b x y buttons these are the four directional buttons this is the l1 r1 you also have spaces over here if you can see you can make holes and you can fit the l2 and r2 i have not mapped them anywhere so as you can see this is how it changes to the different consoles i am mainly concerned about game boy advance because that's what i have over here this is a working example but the battery life is not that great because it's an old device I have physical games and I want to emphasize on this again that I don't support piracy by any chance and the game that is Zelda that I'll be showing I have a physical copy like this which I'm showing over here. Next let's give you a overview of what's below here. So the PCB below this is the Raspberry Pi and the PCB up top this is a Bluetooth amplifier module which is running the speaker module over here. This is rather big. If you have a small one, you can use even inside the chassis. This is the main power on off switch. On this side, there is a big hole. If you can see over here, this is because so that I can easily access the USB ports which are on the inside. Otherwise, I have to open this up, these screws again to put SD card reader or USB uh, keyboard and mouse that's not handy and if you can see over here this is a micro USB port which is for the charging purpose and this little special little switch I'll explain in the hardware part of this video and at the back side you can see there are four LEDs of which three are lit this is nothing but a power bank circuit and you can press this button to check the status of the battery capacity over here just like a power bank and inside there is a 10,000 mAh battery and this is the start and the select and these three buttons over here is for the display control so that's the whole deal with this device so now I'll just show you a very quick review of the gameplay video and I'll just play the Zelda one finish cap I have a save game I think so this is how the startup will seem 
running this hardware on this battery power and voltage so the under voltage sign is still on but it's nothing it plays quite well actually and all these lines if you, if you are able to see this is because of the camera refresh rate is interfering so let's just go into one of the safe states and load it i think it was in states stop one yeah so let's load it so there we are right into the gameplay let's adjust the camera a bit I won't be saving this state you just press the start and the select that is why these two buttons are over here at first I was going to put them over here so after thought we just go back into the main menu and to go back this is my back button you can assign these buttons as you like in this menu configure input and all you have to do this because it will be by default paired to a keyboard and a mouse so you have to pair all of these these button pairing and how i have connected it with the gpio pins of the raspberry pi i will show in the hardware part of the video so this video is getting quite long actually so let me just shut it down shut down system so this is how you shut it down otherwise this will if you just shut shut down the power it will just call up the system you can also check out the status LED over here and when it is off I just switch the power off it's that simple so I hope all of you really enjoyed this video and got intrigued by the sneak peek of this device and its performance it's quite actually it's quite very useful uh, for the gaming purpose also for all the DIY people out there you people will appreciate this and it's for those people so if you don't want to miss the second and the third and the subsequent videos about this and how you can build your own, I would urge you to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet. Like, share and comment your ideas below. I read and reply to each and every one of them. And I won't take up much of your time. So catch you on the next video. Peace.